Hi, I'm Andrea Hansen, Principal of Workplace Strategy at Decker Parrott Sabatini, New Mexico's largest architecture and design firm, and our home office is here in Albuquerque. And I'm Kate Dimock, Principal of Interior Design and Leader of Change Management at Decker Parrott Sabatini. Like many of the attendees in this audience today, we're business owners just like you, and we've had to react to COVID-19 and make tweaks to the way we both do our work and serve our clients. We don't know what the perfect solution will look like, and we're continually tweaking the strategy that we use for our firm. But we're choosing to take this moment of change to accelerate the growth and possibility for our business. And we think you can do this too. We've created a program called Write Things In, Write Things Out, because we've learned that safety and security of people in any industry are paramount, particularly now in the pandemic. If you bring the right things in, you will have better outcomes. Our primary focus is on workplace and the office, but this process can be applied to any industry. And to get you started, we've created a simple and easy to use checklist that you can download right after this session. It highlights basic steps that you can take today, regardless of business size or type, to make your spaces safer and healthier. We know that everything will be applicable to your business in this presentation or in the checklist, but we hope that you'll use the information and pass it along to your colleagues and friends. We're here as a resource and no two situations are alike as we've learned in helping some of our clients and businesses, but we're here to help you navigate the future. So today we'll discuss five key concepts. What customers really care about the most, what owners need to know, really what drives business success, what people need now and well into the future, and ultimately what you can do now to do something about it. The number one thing people are concerned about is safety and security. And as a business owner, we're concerned about that too. We also need to acknowledge that between 25 and 30% of the workforce will be working from home multiple days from here on out. The genie's out of the bottle and it's not going back in. While there are no absolutes or guarantees, there are things that we can do to support healthier and safer environments and adapt to new ways of working and use this opportunity to accelerate business innovation. These are some of the common measures that we see day to day to provide the perception of safety, but there is no magic bullet to eliminate all risk. Plexiglass screens and that six foot diameter sticker on the floor, well, those are things that the CDC are recommending but more importantly, they have us doing them in conjunction with other preventative measures, like wearing masks, washing our hands, not touching our faces. These are all great things, but do remember that a cough can send those droplets up to 28 feet. So wearing that mask is really important. This pyramid from the CDC shows that the most effective way to limit risk is to stay at home but that won't invigorate our economy. We need to bring people back and it starts slowly, but then we start looking at taking the pulse of the building. Let's think about how the mechanical systems work and how they can be improved. This is in order to create healthier buildings. The next step is administrative controls, making sure people are spaced out. And lastly, wearing masks. The people around us are just as important as the space around us. Will people behave and will they respect your health? And does this employer or retailer value my trust? It's time to take the pulse of the people. Ask what they need, listen to their concerns, and take action. We need to communicate about the steps we're taking to put the safety and the security at the forefront, but we also have to be transparent about how we're doing it. One way to do that is to create communication plans and implement change management strategies to help reduce some of the anxiety and the fear people are feeling. And that's a lot of what we've been doing with our clients and our own organization. What we've seen is a change in what people actually need. We used to design for commonalities, but now we understand that each generation is adapting differently post-pandemic. You already know your customers' preferences and buying patterns have changed, but it may not be as apparent that their needs for space have changed as well. Boomers, they're coping and adapting the best. They're likelier to have dedicated space at home, but they're concerned about getting COVID if they get out there in the world. Balance that with 
the fact that if they don't return, there may be financial implications and they really need safety and respite. Gen X is the latchkey generation and most prepared to cope with social isolation, juggling personal stress along with their parents' needs. And they're trying to figure out how to cope financially. Most importantly, they're trying to help their kids with schooling or distance education, and they too need safety and respite. Millennials represent the largest share of the labor force. Many were already feeling incredibly socially disconnected pre-pandemic, and the pandemic, of course, has made that worse. Some are juggling jobs with children at home, and others are living with roommates or in small apartments. They have a strong desire for connection. Gen Z is taking the pandemic incredibly seriously. They know what the risks are, but they don't have any life experiences to draw from in order to calm their stress about this pandemic. They have empathy and adaptability, but they're really lacking mentoring and skill development for their career advancement. So each of these generations have very different needs in terms of space. So what does that look like? The first is safety and respite, and this is what boomers and Gen X are looking for. They're looking for places where they can have quiet time, where they have focus rooms, where they can relax, where the lighting levels are lower and lower ambient noise, a calming environment. Gen Y is looking for connection. These are spaces where people can come together to collaborate and socialize. And we need to make sure that they're large enough so people can spread out, but it also has to be very cleanable. And as Kate mentioned, mentoring and coaching is huge. We see this every day in our environment. These are the kind of spaces where people can come together to teach and to learn. So what can we do now? First, you have to define your purpose. What are the business goals you're trying to achieve? Because this will guide all the steps that follow. And then you have to take the pulse of both the people and the building. Listen to employees, customers, and clients about what they need to feel safe again, and then to support their trust in your company. See how your building is performing too. What can you do to improve it and make it a healthier space? So now it's time to prepare your space. Use our checklist to get started. And let your clients and employees and customers know what you're doing to keep them safe. Take a look at your space. A number of options will incur little or no cost, from spacing out your furniture to making sure you have a great sanitization and cleaning plan. All those can make a huge impact. And don't forget those outdoor spaces. People in our environment love being outside, and it really, once again, is a no cost. Now it's time to test the plan. Let's take the time to see if the approach works. It's your dress rehearsal. It's your soft opening. And if it's not quite right, tweak it and try again. There's no one size fits all answer. So give yourself time and permission to experiment. And finally, accept the pivot. Reframe your perspective and use COVID as a chance to reinvent your company. Where do you want to take it? And what do you want it to be? The only mistake you can make now is to ignore this opportunity to learn, grow, and reinvent.